Alright, this is chapter 46 of The Lake, and I'm really hoping that this lighting covers how red my face is, but if I look a little red, it's because I just got back from my run. But, without further ado, 46. I used to love the mystery of night. Things can exist in the dark that can't in the light. Elves and unicorns could be running around for all we know. No, I haven't lost it. I know logically that's not true, but if you can't see something, then how can you be sure it doesn't exist? Five-year-old me loved the thought of her toys coming alive at night and mythical creatures flying around outside. It's not such a fun thought anymore. Not since I know what is lurking in the dark. I'm currently sitting around a campfire listening to a conversation about football. I like football as next as much as the next non-obsessive American, but I don't want to spend hours talking about it. I tap my fingers against my soda can and wish everyone else would get up and do something else. When we break off and go our own ways, I can get away. The radio is in my pocket already and Kayla has one too. <laughs> While Andy was briefing everyone, I swiped two radios from the staff cabin. It was embarrassingly easy to do. I can see how Lillian managed to get keys. Ollie watches me from the other side of the fire. I don't know what he's thinking, but we're still in a fight. Usually, he would be sitting next to me. Tonight, however, he sat as far away from me as he could. His little tantrum over my simple question hasn't been forgotten. I still have a lot of questions, and he clearly doesn't want to answer any of them. There has to be a reason for that. Why is he staring? Kayla asks, looking anywhere but at the boys across from us. I shrug, not really in the mood to talk to her about it. I don't know, but it's starting to freak me out. He's going to have to find something else to look at if I want to get away. You remember at school when you needed to call your cousin about Beaver concert tickets, so I told the teacher you were about to hurl? She let you go to the bathroom. Please don't tell everyone I'm about to hurl. She laughs. I just mean I've got your back. She takes a breath. You've got to be careful out there, Esme. Kayla will always be my friend, and I love her, but she is blowing so hot and cold at the moment. I don't know how much I can rely on her. I'll be careful. This could all be over tonight. Sighing, she looks up at the sky. I hate so. I hate being scared. We're going to be fine. I can't die, she whispers, curling her hands in a fist. You're not going to die. I can practically see her heart rate spike. Kayla, it's going to be all right, I promise. She purses her lips, and I know she's thinking of her grandma. It was awful. Kayla watched her nana die in that car and thought she was next. Taking a deep breath, she gets up and plasters on a big smile. Okay, let's end this tonight. We both raise our hands in a little wave at the same time. A wave of nausea almost makes me double over. We're going to bed, guys, I say, rising to my feet. Ollie looks at me with a slight frown, but he says, night, with everyone else. Kayla and I tiptoe through the main room where the girls are sleeping and into our room. I pull the door closed and turn to her. Right. I'll go out the window. They won't see me from this side of the cabin. Kayla's eyes dart from the door to the window. Please, please, please be careful. I'll be fine. Rebecca's out there with the rest of them. You still think she's involved? Hopefully we'll know soon. Should I go back out and make sure she doesn't leave? No, nah, I don't think she's going anywhere tonight. She's been yawning for the last hour. I'm still tired from the never-ending deer and dull night, too. Let's not think about that. I'll keep watch out the window and see if she sneaks off, Kayla says. If Rebecca does sneak off, Kayla will see her from our bedroom. Radio me if she does, like the very second, but use a code word in case any of the girls from the main room hear. What code word? Er, clover. Kayla scrunches up her face. That lucky weed? I need all the luck I can get. Okay, I'll say clover if I see Rebecca heading your way. I open the door, haul myself up, and sweep my legs out. I'll be as quick as I can. Careful, Esme. That's my middle name. Your middle name is Mallory, and it means unfortunate one. It's a family middle name. We haven't all been unfortunate. Just me, actually. I wave my hand dismissing her. See you soon. Dropping to the ground, I watch Kayla close the window, and then I creep through the bushes to meet the little trail into town. I walk into the night, the tree's my only company. The air is warm and silent. I take light steps and look up when I hear a hoot. Damn owl nearly gave me a heart attack. It takes flight and sweeps through the tree and swoops through the trees. I've been in the woods for about 30 seconds, and I already regret my life choices. It's dark as hell, the air is colder than usual, and I'm alone. 
The dark and I don't feel like friends anymore. I put one foot in front of the other following the trodden man-made path toward town. I dressed in dark colors and left my flashlight on my bed so I'm walking slowly. The less noise I make, the less likely Lillian is to find me. I think she and Rebecca have been coming from the other side of the lake where the fire was. This was by far my dumbest idea since I was 14 and thought a perm would look great. The curls were so tight I looked like a poodle. The forest feels alive tonight. When I'm too far to hear any sounds from camp, I hear the soft breeze dancing between the trees. Small animals scurry away from me before I see them. When I reach the end of the forest, I roll my shoulders. I made it. I look around and cross the deserted road. The trees finally give way to houses. Big stone houses with large manicured lawns, and my shoulders lose tension. Rebecca's house is right on the edge of town. I make a right and stop. I My eyes flit to my phone screen where the map where the map is showing a dot for Rebecca's house and another one for me. Besides a few people out walking, I don't see anyone. No one gives me a second glance, probably because I'm not in camp clothing. I blend in. I'm even pretending that the heat isn't making me want to run for the nearest AC. It takes me two minutes to walk around the block and come face to face with the Rebecca's house. Rebecca is wealthy. I walk up the drive, clutching my phone. Wiggling my fingers, I take a breath and press the doorbell. If Lillian answers now, I'm probably going to pass out. The lock on the door clicks and my muscles tense. A little old lady with rollers in her hair and wearing a fluffy pink robe answers the door. Definitely not Lillian. Rebecca's Nana? Yes? Hi, um, my name is Chloe. My little Pomeranian's name. My car breaks down a block away. I've called Triple A and they'll be here soon, but... I hid my face with my hands. Ugh, this is so embarrassing, but I'm kind of desperate for the bathroom. I drop my hands and smile. Oh, sugar, she draws. Would it all be possible to use yours, please? Of course, come on in. I'll show you where it is. Thank you. She points to a dark wood door on the right. Just there. I really appreciate this. I tell her and disappear into the bathroom. I lock the door, close my eyes, and lean against the wall. Wall. Clawing at my sudden itchy skin, I look around. I don't want to be in this house for a second longer than necessary. Okay, you can do this. I need to find out as much as I can about Rebecca without making her nana suspicious. After a minute, I flush the toilet and wash my hands. When I come out the bathroom, Rebecca's nana pops around the corner. Over here! Okay, she's inviting me deeper into the house. I walk into her little country kitchen. Your house is lovely, I tell her. Old people love it when you compliment their home. My nan goes full on bashful. Thank you, darling, she replies. Can I get you an iced tea? Oh, that would be awesome, if you don't mind. She waves her hand. Of course not. Take a seat over there. I do as I'm told and sit at the round table in the corner. From here, I can see the living room. There are tiny pink flowers. There are little pink flowers all over the sofas. On the wall behind me is a massive collage. There must be about 50 photos. This all your family? I ask. She looks over from the fridge. Oh yes, I have five children and 13 grandchildren. My first great-grandchild is due in the fall. You all look so happy, I tell her, scouring the collage for pictures of Rebecca. And bingo, there she is, smiling in a picture with people I assume are her cousins. Her face steals my breath. Do they all live close by? Oh, we're scattered, I'm afraid. Every one of my children chose different colleges across the country. The grandchildren have done the same, but they all come back to visit. That's good you get to see them, she nods. My granddaughter Rebecca spent some time here over a few summers, but she's older now, so she's got better things to do. So that's how Rebecca so that's how Rebecca and Lillian know each other. They must have met when Rebecca came to stay with her grandma. They spent summers together plotting. Are your grandkids coming this summer? Some of them might. Rebecca has an internship, some accounting firm. She's always been good with numbers. Internship? That's why she told your mom. That's why she told her mom she was needed in the conference room. Rao, Rebecca's nan doesn't know she's just ten minutes down the road. No wonder Rebecca was acting so shifty at the arcade and hiding in corners. She was afraid she'd be seen by the locals. There are so many more questions I want to ask, but I'm very aware that it's going to seem weird if I keep going. I don't want her to call Rebecca and talk about the stranger whose car broke down and who asked lots of questions about her. I have what I need for now. I smile at Rebecca's grandmother. Thank you so much for letting me into your home. I should get going now. AAA will be here soon. All right, you be careful out there at night, Chloe. The night isn't my problem. Your granddaughter is.